Hello everyone, this is Robert from Book of Mormon Editions, where we discuss printings, publications, and various editions of the Book of Mormon. Today we will review a volume that many people are not familiar with and doesn't get a lot of attention, but surprisingly, it has become a benchmark in terms of Book of Mormon formatting. We are talking about a volume so monumental that it still has influence over Salt Lake printing of the Book of Mormon even today, and no one really even thinks about it. This is the 1879 printing of the Book of Mormon, a hardcover volume printed for the Deseret News Publishing Company and credited to Orson Pratt. In addition, Orson Pratt sometimes goes unnoticed due to him being the younger brother of Parley P. Pratt. However, this gentleman is pretty significant on his own in regards to early church history. Orson was baptized in September of 1830 and was known as an amazing missionary on the East Coast and the British Isles and eventually became one of the Twelve Apostles. As a pioneer traveling west, Orson Pratt was part of the Vanguard Company which crossed the plains with Brigham Young and was with Erastus Snow as the scouting party and the first going into the Salt Lake Valley. However, it is noted that Orson Pratt sometimes was at odds with Brigham Young regarding various points of early church doctrine and was often sent on missions away from Brigham and the early church leadership of Utah. This is where our volume of the Book of Mormon comes into play. After Brigham Young's death in 1877, Orson began reviewing the texts of the Book of Mormon. And finally, in 1879, Orson Pratt submitted a volume of the Book of Mormon with a new formatting system, with new chapter breaks and versing. This volume would be printed in Salt Lake and simultaneously in Great Britain. Prior to this, the Book of Mormon from 1830 and onward was in larger chapter sections and often had long paragraphs. An example, uh, 1 Nephi had seven large-sized chapters to it. So Orson Pratt submitted a publication that split the text block into smaller chapters. Instead of seven long chapters, he split the same text into 22 chapters of 1 Nephi. In addition, instead of longer paragraphs, Orson Pratt split versing up into proper sentences that could be spoken often within a single breath. This made a lot of sense, especially in the second Nephi sections regarding the Isaiah quotations, which would now match Bible chapter breaks. So in general, this was a radical change in formatting of the Book of Mormon in 1879. It also meant that conversations, pamphlets, and other documentation would now have to have new chapter and verse referencing. Despite this drastic change, it caught on, even after Orson Pratt's death in 1881 as the 1883, the 1885, and other volumes in both America and Great Britain had this new formatting. Even when George Q. Cannon started publishing the Book of Mormon a few years later, the Orson Pratt chapter and versing formatting was used. What's interesting is that this chapter and verse formatting was used for the Salt Lake texts, as the reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints kept the original system even when they published their volume in 1908 and onward. Interestingly, though, the 1899 Nephite records, published by the Whitmerite family as the Church of Christ, and there were also the Bickertonite Rigdonite movement called the Church of Jesus Christ, headquartered in Pennsylvania, also used the Orson Pratt chapter in verse formatting. It seemed that this was an acknowledgment that the Salt Lake text had the dominant influence that other publications would match. However, once again, this was originally for the Salt Lake volumes of the Book of Mormon, originating in 1879 and onward. And in fact, this formatting is now considered the standard for church uh, Salt Lake texts of the Book of Mormon, even within the dark blue uh, cover of the current missionary volume. And some volumes in recent years have credited Orson Pratt for his work for all the way back from 1879. So when we read and discuss the last chapters of Second Nephi, where Nephi states that he hopes that many of us, if not all of us, be saved in God's kingdom at the last day, we can thank Orson Pratt for it being in chapter 33, verse 12 of the New Book of Mormon, instead of it being in Second Nephi chapter 15. 
So thanks, everyone, for sharing some time regarding an often forgotten edition of the Book of Mormon and how it still has an impact on printing today. If you have a noteworthy or specific edition of the Book of Mormon that you'd like reviewed here, please contact me at bomeditions at gmail.com. Best wishes, everyone.